Hey, friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today in our 30-day series, I just want to show you a couple of the ways that Logic Pro really ties into your Mac system. It's integrated, obviously, because it's an Apple application. And it's really cool how Logic ties into our Macs because we can have immediate access to things like our iTunes library. We can open projects from different applications such as GarageBand or GarageBand for iOS. We can even print things like notation or notes that we've written down in Logic. We also have access to Logic Remote, which I won't cover in this video, but I'll link in this video. And we can even share our Logic projects thanks to various Apple functions. So first, I just wanna draw our attention to the fact that we have a media library here. And I use this, I would say fairly frequently. And you can access this just with key command F or just by clicking the button here. And then we have the media tab and we have audio or movies if you're scoring to film. And I love it. All of the audio that we've purchased from the iTunes store, or if you just populated your iTunes library with music you already own, it's just a fantastic way of quickly organizing and quickly retrieving different files. For me, I like to use different tracks for reference mixes, but perhaps you like to use different tracks for sampling purposes. And it's super helpful. You can just click and drag directly into your project and away we go. I also like that the different browsers in Logic are tied to your Max Finder. So for example, if I wanna find the folder that this Billie Eilish track lives in, I can just right click and reveal in Finder. And immediately it's brought to the forefront in the Finder. This is very helpful if you find a file somewhere on your Mac within this browser and you're like, man, I need to know where that is exactly. We can do the same thing with tracks in our sessions. So we just navigate to somewhere in Dropbox here and I'll just pick random piece of audio. So let's select that one. Go into the project browser here, right click, show files in Finder, boom, right there. And we also have the all files tab here that's very helpful for locating different files. You know, we have different views of our system that we can choose from, but perhaps we want to bookmark specific folders or files because we're going back to them again and again. You can do exactly that just by, you know, navigating to that section. So I'll just pick a random folder, go down to this gear here, and go to bookmark this particular folder or file or whatever it is that you're working with. And we now have a bookmark tab within the all files section. So we can see it right there. We can always navigate to that folder if we need to. Additionally, if you're working with untagged loops or user loops within the loop library, you can access another bookmark tab right here. Cool, and there's just little workflow enhancements just because you're working within a Mac system. If we open the voice memos here, Sometimes I like to record little bits of audio that I like to save as ideas. And if I just click and drag this directly into the mixer, boom, it's right there. And we can even take a listen to this. You can hear my air conditioner in the background. But check it out. Now we have our whistle. And if I turn on flex time, go to flex pitch. This is a little off the beaten track here, but if we open the editor, and now I'm gonna select everything and make sure it's pitch corrected. Probably not completely correct. But then if we go to edit, create MIDI track from flex pitch data, we now have a MIDI track of my whistle. So now we can get right to work. We can see there's a little bit of a mess up there, but nothing we can't correct. But now we're off to the races. It's really fantastic. And we can also open up projects from other applications, namely GarageBand and GarageBand iOS, but we also can open up from the Music Memos app just by navigating to File, down to Import, Music Memos File, and this will direct you to the iCloud Drive if you're using that on your Mac. So I have different ideas that I can import. So we'll just import this guy. Perfect. So now I have some sort of guitar idea. and we can build from that. But I wanna show you how we can open up a GarageBand iOS project right within Logic. It's fantastic. And this extends itself to GarageBand as well. So I'm gonna to go to iCloud Drive, GarageBand for iOS, this particular riff here, I'm gonna right click on it, open with Logic Pro 10. We're gonna close this down and we're gonna to need to save this project. So you can see I already have a trap project, but we'll just call it trap three. And we'll save it as a package for now. Save this. And now we have a riff that I've written on my iPad and now it's open in Logic 
including all of the instrumentation here. So all of the notes that I've played, fantastic. And let's just turn this guy down because I know it's too loud. And we can start working from this project that we had from our iPad. It's fantastic. Now, this is an area that I think is gonna be a lot of help to people. And that's the fact that you can actually print notation and notes from Logic. It's really amazing. If we select all our tracks, and in fact, I don't even think we need to select everything. Let's just open the notation using key command N. And we're gonna adjust the view here. We're gonna adjust this to page view. Cool. And then we're gonna go to layout and we're gonna go to numbers and names. And this is gonna open up some project settings. I'm going to include the instrument names and we're also going to adjust the first staff and other staffs to include short name or full name. And just like that, we have our trap door, our chip tune lead, got another chip tune lead. In fact, let's bring in like a string section. So we'll introduce maybe some strings, orchestral. Yeah, let's just bring those in. Open the notation and boom, we have instrument four. So I'm gonna rename that string and go back and open the notation. Select everything just like that. And now let's go command P, go to okay. And we can either print this or save it as a PDF. So I'm gonna actually save this as a PDF and we'll call this, go to the desktop, already have some scoring going on. We'll save this and we'll replace. And now if we go to the desktop here, open scoring. And just like that, we have notation that we can print or save as a PDF so we can provide our musicians the information they need. Additionally, you can also print notes from the notepad. So let's introduce the notepad, close the notation for this trap door. I'm just gonna say, you know, let's just take a look at the channel strip here. So we've got a compressor, We've also got overdrive and we'll assume that it's set to three dB or drive of three. And we'll also see bit crusher set to eight bit, just whatever information we might need. At this point we can print and look at that. So we'll save this as a PDF as well. And we'll save this as notes, save it to the desktop. And once again, notes, and you can see it right there information that we might need to provide other folks, whether they're mixing or whatever the case may be. Now I have a whole video dedicated to Logic Remote on the iPad. I think it is fantastic. So I'll link to that video. So the last bit of the puzzle I'm gonna look at is some of the sharing options here. So we can share a song directly to music or iTunes right from the share function. That's really helpful if you wanna test drive some songs in relation to your library. We can adjust the quality. We can choose uncompressed or various versions of MP4s. We can add metadata if we want. We can export the cycle area only. We can also share directly to our media browser. So the media browser that we took a look at, we can directly export to that, which can be helpful for different scenarios. We can also send songs directly to SoundCloud, which I'm sure for many users is a huge value add if you're working in that sort of SoundCloud ecosystem. But what I like about it is the ability to share via AirDrop, that's really helpful. So I can actually share, we'll just call this Trap 3, high quality. We'll just share the song right now. And it's going to bounce the song in place. Now it's created a file and we're gonna be able to share between my iPad or if my iPhone was accessible via Wi-Fi right now, it would be included in that list. We can also share via mail, which requires that your project is saved as a package. If it's a folder, which is my much preferred way of saving projects, it's not going to be able to transfer, but we save it as a project and we share and it'll open the mail app and it'll actually create an iCloud Drive location for folks to download that project. And lastly, we can actually directly share this to GarageBand for iOS. And it just bounces the project in place to share this project as an audio file, not a multi-track mix. And that's just some of the ways that I know that Logic integrates with Mac systems. So in this way, it kind of pays to use an Apple app with a Mac system. If you know of different ways that Logic integrates with the Mac ecosystem, please leave a comment, send me a message. I would love to know. 
I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week, I'm posting new videos, emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much, and I'll see you tomorrow in this series.